Hi there and welcome to our student devotion for this week as we continue our Bible journey. We're on a journey. It is our own Route 66 through the 66 books of the Bible, a devotion from each one of them, from Genesis to Revelation, which we've been doing for many months now. And today we come to our 26th stop, uh, which is the book of Ezekiel. Now, Ezekiel is one of the very obscure prophets of the Old Testament that people battle to understand, uh, but it has some wonderful material in it, and I want to focus just on one verse in Ezekiel 22.30 uh, using the New Living Translation. But let's look at the backstory just a little bit, first of all, to give you some setting for the book of Ezekiel. The people of Israel, the southern kingdom of Judah, had been taken away into exile, and with them had gone this man by the name of Ezekiel, whom God had called to be a prophet. And he did some very strange things. God called upon him to act in very strange ways, and part of it was because he was struck dumb for part of the time, and so he had to do everything by acting it out, do it pictorially. And he was given a tough task because the people now were in Babylon, and back where they had come from, the city of Jerusalem had fallen, and he had to tell them, that very bad news that in fact Jerusalem had not only fallen, but it had been uh, destroyed. It had been burnt, many parts of it had been burnt to the ground. Uh, they were not going to go back there in a hurry. And he was there to give them God's message while they were in captivity, while they were in this exile. The problem was that idolatry was still rife. And if you look in chapter 20, verse 32 of Ezekiel, which is not the verse we're particularly going to look at, but you will find uh, that God said to Ezekiel and through Ezekiel that the things which had actually caused this exile, which was people turning away from the true God, people going after idols, people getting involved in high levels of immorality and all sorts of other corrupt forms of living, uh, it was still rife. It was still going on. The people had not turned back to God. Uh, they had been carried away. Here they are now in a foreign country uh, as uh, some kind of refugees almost. Uh, they weren't treated particularly badly. It wasn't like the time when the people had been in Egypt and they were made slaves. Uh, they were in fact allowed to live in their own little town and uh, were reasonably well looked after. Uh, and the result of that was that they became a little bit comfortable and did not turn back to God. The very thing that had caused the exile had not caused them to repent. And Ezekiel is given this quite tough job of standing before them and saying, you have got to repent, and if you don't, further judgment must come your way. In fact, what happened was that a group of the leaders of the people, they gathered together, and by the way, that's when the concept of the synagogue first came into being. Well, some of those, probably what we call today synagogue leaders, came up to Ezekiel and said, well now, what's the message that the Lord has got for us? Surely God's got a message for us. And God's response through Ezekiel was, I have nothing to say to you. I have no message for you because you have not turned from your sin. God loves talking to his people. God loves meeting the needs of his people. But only if we first of all put our hearts right with him. So this was the situation that Ezekiel now finds himself in. And that leads us to our verse for this week, Ezekiel 22.30. And I've chosen the New Living Translation because it's so clear. Because the Lord actually has a lament. The Lord says to Ezekiel, 
I looked for someone who might rebuild the wall of righteousness that guards the land. I searched for someone to stand in the gap. Now, people often have this view of God in the Old Testament that he's a God of wrath, a God of judgment, a harsh God, because he handed out punishment to people when they sinned. But listen to the heart of God when he's saying, I'm actually longing to have a relationship with my people. I'm looking for someone who might put things back in place. Now, as far as the, the Jewish people were concerned, all they wanted to rebuild was the wall of the city of Jerusalem and go back and live there. Listen to what God says. I'm looking for someone who will rebuild the wall of righteousness that guards the land. Now, obviously, the, he's speaking symbolically, but he's saying we need to put a wall around us, not for physical safety, but for spiritual safety. I need somebody who's going to be a righteous person like Abraham used to be, like many of the Old Testament saints have been, and I can't find one. I searched for someone to stand in the gap. And he is now speaking to Ezekiel, and he's saying, actually, Ezekiel, I want you to be the person to stand in the gap. Now, what did he mean? He was saying to Ezekiel, this people, they have turned away from me. Their hearts are far from me. Somebody needs to be the one who says, come back to God. Somebody needs to stand between me, says God, and this people and proclaim to them the truths of God, the truths of God's word, calling them back to a right relationship with God. And you know, it struck me as I read this, and uh, I recently wrote a book on Ezekiel, so I've studied this whole book very well. Uh, but this was the passage that just jumped out at me because if we are children of God today, if you have come into a right relationship with God yourself, there's a sense in which God is saying to you, I'd love you to be a person who stands in the gap for me, to stand between me and a lost world. And we are in a lost world, are we not? We are surrounded by people who are, are desperate because of the state our world is in, a world of crime, a world of war, a world of suffering, a world of pain, a, a world of, well, <laughs> you make the list. It's actually not a great world to live in at the moment. And the only solution for this world, says God, is if somebody will rebuild the wall of righteousness. Start putting morality back in place. Start putting biblical truth back in place. Start re-establishing the Ten Commandments as a wall of righteousness to guard the land. That's what the world needs. And it's not just going to happen unless somebody stands in the gap between God and the people and is willing to be that one to say, I'll speak out for you, God. How do we do that? Well, first of all, we've got to answer the question, will you be that person? Because if you're willing to be that person, then it starts by you and me, if we're willing to say yes to the Lord, it starts by us living out the sort of life that these people should be living. We need to be showing them what it means to follow God, what it means to live like Christ urged his disciples to live. It means having standards which are completely different from the world, uh, a set of ethics and morals that are completely different from the world. It involves standing against the culture of our world, the practices of our world, the things which are increasingly becoming norms in our world that are ungodly, that are unrighteous, that are far from what God wants his world to be. 
people must be able to look at us and say, I see there's something different about you. I think it's one of the terrible tragedies of our world when people look at Christians or look at Christian churches and say, I don't want to go there because of all the hypocrites that are there, because people go there on a Sunday and they say and sing and do things that all look very good, but I know them from Monday to Friday and they don't look like that at all. So it really is a huge challenge to you and me to be living every single moment of every single day in a way that if people look at us, they will say, I want what that person has. I want to be like that. And when they ask us to hear from us unashamedly that we are like we are, not because we have some personal strength, but we have some indwelling God strength that enables us to be different, that enables us to do what is right, that enables us to make decisions that are good decisions as God defines good. It was a huge challenge to me as I prepared this and I just throw that challenge out to you. Will you be that person this week? You come across somebody who's in need, come across somebody who's questioning what's going on in the world, come across somebody who's fearful about what's going on in the world. Won't you be the person to stand in the gap and say, I have a solution. I'm not the solution, but I know who is. I want to be the gap filler. I hope you'll take that challenge. Let me pray for you. Father Ezekiel found himself in a very difficult position and a very lonely position because so many of his people had turned their backs on you. We today, similarly, if we know and love you, find ourselves in that sort of situation in a world that has turned its back on the true and living God and it seems to be sliding further and further away into evil and godlessness. Will you challenge us about being the one who will stand in the gap in our particular circumstances, in our particular circle, that we would be prepared to stand out for you, stand up for you, speak out the things that we know to be good and right and true and just and noble. And Lord, as you give us that strength, will you give us also spiritual success as we see people responding to that and thanking God that we came their way. May that be true even in this week. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen.